so very warm welcome to all students in this course of hydraulic engineering can you hear me clearly yes sir yes sir and can you also see the slides no sir no, sir slides are not visible yet slide is not visible okay now yes sir we can good all right today is first lecture of uh, hydraulic engineering and uh, normally you people expect introduction in the first lecture uh, and today we will only do the introduction introduction of the teacher and introduction of the subject but that introduction we will do in detail so by the way what is the name of our subject someone should respond me sir hydraulic engineer <laughs> yes maybe the cr of b section and d section or any other person because i want to have interactive session <clears throat> i want to keep you awakening and uh, myself as well and interactive session is always better you know to learn something so the subject name is hydraulic engineering and uh, what is the code of this subject code course code c432 yes c432 c stands for civil engineering and the 4 stands for level of the course our academic year as this is the fourth level course or you are in the fourth year so it is 4 Uh, what this three digit indicates this is the it basically indicates the stream of division of the civil engineering civil engineering department has three main streams or divisions the first is the structural engineering second is geotechnical engineering and third is hydraulic engineering so number 3 is given to the hydraulic engineering division and this 2 is the subject number in all subjects related with the hydraulic engineering division so this is our code <clears throat> and how many are the total credit hours of this subject so 3 4 total credit hours are 4 3 plus 1 3 for the theory and one credit hour for the lab so if you will see the contact hours total contact hours of this subject are how much 6 so 3 plus th yes 6 so 3 for the theory and the 3 for the lab now come to the my introduction you know my name is habibur rahman and uh, i graduated uh, from uh, this university uit lahore in 1991 on the 30th march i graduated and on 31st march i joined this uh, department of civil engineering as lecturer and uh, you know in uh, 1996 i finished my msc studies in structural engineering and on the same year i was promoted as assistant professor in the department 
<coughs> then in 1998, I went to Japan University of Tokyo to pursue my PhD studies. And in 2001, I finished my PhD studies in hydrology and water resources engineering from University of Tokyo, Japan. And I came back in 2001 and then selected as associate professor in the Department of the Civil Engineering. Then in 2004, I was selected as the professor in the Department of Civil Engineering. So since 2004, I am working as professor in the Department of the Civil Engineering, UET Lahore. In addition to, you know, the teaching and the research activities, I have contributed UET in several ways uh, with these additional duties, like the number one. So I served as director computer center uh, from 2004 to 2009. Then as the head of hydraulic, an irrigation engineering division from 2009 to 2016. And, you know, we have a research journal at UET, which is called as Pakistan Journal of Engineering and Applied Sciences. So I acted as editor of the journal uh, from 2010 to 2018. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, the CPD activities are, are now very, very important. Continuous professional development activities, uh, which are required for long life learning, uh, you, to keep update uh, with the uh, present knowledge and the latest equipments and the latest softwares. So CPD activities are being carried out under the umbrella of Pakistan Engineering Council. So I acted as professional engineering body coordinator for conducting CPD activities from 2015 to 2018. And then also served as chairman civil engineering department uh, from 2017 to 2018 for around six months. And then served as director Center of Excellence of Water Resources Engineering from 2nd January 2017 to 11 January 2019, around two years. And once again, uh, I served as Chairman of the Civil Engineering Department uh, from 9th January 2019 to 25th June 2019. And presently, I am working as Dean, Faculty of Civil Engineering, uh, since 10 September 2019. So this is uh, my brief introduction. Now I would like to go towards the introduction of the subject. So we have to define hydraulic engineering. So this is the very basic definition of hydraulic engineering, which is given here. Hydraulic engineering is the application of fluid mechanics principles. You know, we studied many principles in the fluid mechanics, in the fluid mechanics one course, and then in the fluid mechanics two course. And you know, the practical applications of those principles of the fluid mechanics uh, to solve the problems dealing with the collection of water, storage of water, regulation of water, transportation of water, and the measurement of water. So that subject is called hydraulic engineering. Is it okay? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, the fluid mechanics subject you have already studied uh, fluid one and fluid two and that's why i think you must be knowing what is fluid mechanics fluid mechanics how can we define it? Uh, so branch of mechanics 
Vijay with the plot. Yes. Sorry. Anjay. जी, what is fluid mechanics? Fluid mechanics क्या है? How we can define fluid mechanics subject? You know it is the branch of mechanics, branch of science, which deals with the response of fluids either at rest or in motion okay but the next thing is well, what are fluids ye fluids kya hote hain so that so that can flow jo flow kar sake unhe un fluids ka flow okay but uh, i want to know the technical definition of the fluids technical definition kya hai फ्लूइड्स की सो दैट दैट कंटेन्स द वॉल्यूम ऑफ दैट यस यस प्लीज डोंट वरी इफ यू डोंट नो एग्जैक्ट डजंट मैटर बट प्लीज स्पीक I encourage so that the shape of any subject, uh, any object in which they are placed, it gets the shape. Okay. And what else? So ring compressible. Sorry. What did you say? Sir, fluid has no proper shape uh, and incompressible. Invisible. Sir, incompressible. Incompressible. Fluid is incompressible. So we cannot say that fluids are incompressible. Fluids are compressible. सिर्फ फ्लूइड्स वो होते हैं जिनमें शेयरिंग रेजिस्टेंस नहीं होती और ये उसी बर्तन की शेप ले लेते हैं जिसमें हम इसे डालते हैं ओके ऑलराइट ओके आई वुड लाइक टू रिपीट द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द फ्लूइड्स दैट्स बिकॉज़ दैट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट द डेफिनेशन डजंट मैटर फॉर अस बट द कांसेप्ट्स व्हिच वी विल लर्न फ्रॉम द डेफिनेशन दोस वुड बी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस ओके so what are fluids fluids are the substances which are capable of flowing comma which confirms the shape of containing vessels and when they are at rest cannot sustain tangential or shear forces so this is the complete technical definition of fluids is it okay yes sir hmm. now you know now we want to understand how the fluids when they are at rest cannot sustain tangential and shear forces you know the first two parts are very easy to understand fluids are the substances which are capable of flowing we see you know every day water flowing and the gases they are flowing in the pipelines and the other things flowing liquids etc the second they uh, you know and contains the shape of the uh, and they get the shape of the containing vessels we know very well if in a bottle we fill water they get its shape the third is when they are at rest cannot sustain tangential and shear forces to understand that Uh, let's consider lab joint do you know lab joint i think you have studied in drawings lab joints are in steel structures they the butt joint and the lab joint 
in the lap joint one plate is placed over the other and the hole is drilled and you know in that hole which thing we insert a riveted joint so i am talking thing, about welding material yeah riveted joint i am talking about riveted lap joint so we make holes and then in that holes we insert a rivet by the way what is the material of rivet <coughs> What is the usual material metal. of rivet? And it? Metal. Yeah, it is. It's a metal. Metal, metal. Okay. Yes, you are right. Which metal usually we use in these steel structures? Like you might have seen the Lahore railway station. And you, you, you it's have seen. You could have seen a lot of riveting. Yes. It's a steel metal. Which, yes, steel metal, and this is mild steel usually. Okay, once uh, we, you have a, a riveted lap joint, and then you apply tensile force to the plates, which type of stresses will develop on the interface of these two plates on the rivet? Once stresses by the way. Shear stresses. Okay. So, what do you think? Is the steel is is it strong enough in shear? What do you think? Yes, steel is strong enough in shear. So, okay. Now remove this uh, rivet of the steel and. Uh, Fill any liquid, maybe water, mobile oil, anything, kerosene oil. And now here the liquid is at rest and now apply tensile force. Would it resist shear? No, sir. No. So it means this is proved that fluids, when they are at rest, cannot sustain tangential or shear forces or stresses. And now, who will tell me the definition of viscosity? Then what is viscosity? Viscosity can. So the friction between the layers of a flowing fluid. Is that viscosity? What is the technical definition of viscosity? You know, viscosity is a physical property of a fluid. Is it? Isn't it? It is the measure. Yes, sir. the measure. What is the measure? definition of viscosity in fluid 1? It is the measure of fluid's resistance to flow. It is the internal resistance of a fluid to flow. This, this may be a definition, not technical definition. Uh, this may be a feeling uh, that if the liquid is more viscous, then there would be more resistance to flow. So it's a feeling. Are you sure? But then what is the technical definition of the viscosity? <coughs> viscosity is the internal resistance of a fluid to angular deformation or shear deformation. Is this technical definition of fluids? Yes. Yes, this is the technical definition of fluids. So it means fluids show resistance when they are in when they are at rest or in motion. 
motion, sir. Yes, when they are in motion, but when they are at rest, they cannot sustain. Shear forces. Now to understand this concept, we will go to the next slide here. And here I would like to, you know, these are the basic, th basic things and I want to spend some time on it. Uh, suppose this is a element of a material and it is subjected to this compressive force. And this is, let's say, it's FC compressive force. The same material is now subjected to tensile force FT and also in this direction. And then the same element is subjected to shear force. But what is shear force, by the way? Yes, what is shear force? And what are these two forces, but which I have already replied? So you shear know, force is your force applied you, parallel to the cross section. Ye, yes, very good. It's a force which acts parallel to a section. And what are these compressive and tensile forces? These are the called as normal forces, which acts normal to a surface. So the shear force will act like this. So due to this, the, this material will move in clockwise direction and we need an anti-clockwise couple to bring it in equilibrium. So this force is shear force, okay? Now, what is the deformation now produced by the compressive force. Compressive force can see what the normal force of the tensile force can see what the normal force of the Okay. Compressive force is that which acts towards the body, and tensile force is that force which acts away from the body. Now, what the compressive force does with the body? Which type of deformation is produced by the compressive force? This causes shortening in the direction of applied force. What the tensile force does with the material? For elongation. Yes, elongation. Or extension. Okay, in the direction of applied force. So deformation produced by the compressive force is shortening. Deformation produced by the tensile force is elongation. What should be the deformation produced by the shear force? Shear force kya karegi? The sliding. Okay, please try to understand. What is the original angle of the material? This angle is 90 degrees. 90. And now the resultant of these two forces would be here and the resultant of these two forces here. And what would be the deformed shape? This would be like this. Now, this 90 degree angle will change now to, would it remain same? Less than 90. Why is it the same or change? Change. So, shear forces material ke saath kya karti hai? Angular deformation. It causes angular deformation. Okay. Once we apply compressive force, this does not cause angular def deformation. Jab hum tensile force lagate hai, it does not cause 
angular deformation, but once we apply shear forces, it produces angular deformation. All right. So what is the distortion produced by the shear forces? Angular, angular deformation. Yeah, iska dusra kya naam hai? Distortion, distortion. So what is the viscosity? Ab bataye viscosity kya hai? It is the internal resistance of a fluid to angular deformation. All right. That's why in case of Newton's equation of viscosity, we say that tau that is equal to mu times du over dy. And what is du over dy? That is the velocity gradient. All right. Now we'll go back to the definition. Now I think we we are very much clear with the fluid mechanics and the fluids. Now what is uh, this subject? So hydraulic engineering is basically is the application of principles of the fluid mechanics to problems dealing with the collection of water, storage of water, regulation of water, transportation of water, and measurement of water. Why? For everything for water, because we want to use water. Now, by the way, how we can we collect water? Or where we collect water? Pani kaha hum collect karte? How we can collect water by making dams, dams. by making weirs, okay? Like this is a dam, and this one is a weir, so you can store certain water. And the second is storage of water. So at the back of a dam, you can make a reservoir, and in the reservoir, you can store water, okay? Regulation, regulation means to control flow of water. So if you have gates here in, on the spillway or anywhere or on the outlet, so you can control the flow rate, okay? So you can regulate it. You can stop it, you can allow any flow, you can increase the flow or decrease the flow rate. And the transportation, so you have to move water from one place to another. For that, you may use the open channels or you can use the pipelines and measurement because water uh, is to be measured because it has price. So it, it needs to be measured. So for the measurement of water, we may need maybe rectangular notches, weirs, okay, broad crested weirs, ETC, and uh, from where we can measure the flow rate. <clears throat> so this all, uh, which a subject in which we will discuss this all as all as hydraulic engineering. Is it clear? Okay, see here uh, in this picture, what, what, what is this one? What is this structure? This is a spillway of a dam. And uh, this is the gated spillway. And this is the chute of the spillway. And uh, you can see that here there is a flip bucket and water is thrown up here. And this is called as hydraulic jump. And this is mainly formed to destroy the destructive energy of water. Okay. Now, as we are studying the introduction of the subject, so we must be knowing what are the prerequisites of this subject. So there are three prerequisites, fluid mechanics one, fluid mechanics two, and engineering hydrology. If anybody is fail in any one of these three subjects, he cannot register this subject of hydraulic engineering. Now, what is the course objective of this subject? Uh, this subject we are studying as you people will become familiar with the specific energy concepts. <clears throat> and gradually varied flow in open channels, surface water profiles in open channels, 
sediment transport and hydraulic modeling, hydropower engineering and dam engineering. So that is the main purpose, are to develop the capacity of a student to deal with the practical problems related to hydraulic engineering. So that is the main course objective. Now the course outline, CLOs. You know that now each teacher tells you the CLOs of that course. So what is meant by CLOs? Course learning outcomes ka matlab kya hai? Ji bhai. Yes, sir, this subject ke end pe, this course ke end pe, uh, students ko ye ye chizin pata ho nahi chahi. Pata ho nahi chahi hai. No, outcome. Outcome means what you will be able to do. <coughs> Verb kaun se kar sakenge, hai na? Action, action words, okay. what, you, what you, will, you will do after passing this subject or failing this subject? <laughs> subject ko pass karke ya fail hone ke baad? You know, after passing this subject, jo qualities, jo aap kar sakenge, that is called as CLOs of that course. You know, once you will finish this course, I mean, when you will pass this course, then you will be able to uh, perform these five CLOs. Number one, you will be able to analyze the state of flow. Ke flow ki type kaun si hai? Critical hai, subcritical hai, supercritical hai using specific energy and critical depth concepts in the rectangular and non-rectangular channels. And it's Bloom's taxonomy C4. Dusra aap kya kar sakenge? Jab aap ye course pad lenge, pass kar lenge, then you will be able to compute the water surface profiles on a steady state uniform and non-uniform flow cases, including hydraulic jump. <clears throat> so hydraulic jump kya water surface profile plot kar sakenge. You know a very big dam and it's very big hydraulic structure. So you will be able to prepare its very small scale model. And then if you are performing experiments on that model, then you can find the results of that prototype and you can check the performance of that prototype. <coughs> Number four, the fourth CLO is that after passing this course, you will be able to describe type of dams, their selection, then site characteristics, and you, can, you will be able to compute the external stability of the dam. And the fifth, CLO is after passing this subject, you will be able to compute sediment transport capacity of channels and you will be able to compute the life of reservoirs. So these are the five CLOs with the different, uh, you know, uh, taxonomy levels. The highest taxonomy level is C5, which is to evaluate. And uh, your most of the CLOs, they are related with PLO2, which is the problem analysis. And uh, your CLO3 is correlated with design and development of solutions. Now, what about the lab course? So hydraulic engineering has a lab course, and there are three CLOs of the lab. The first CLO is after finishing the lab course, you will be able to operate under supervision laboratory flu. And you know, it is related with the fourth PLO, which is the investigation. And this is its level is, the Lewis taxonomy level is third in psychomotor. So P3 means psychomotor three. And the second uh, CLO is, you will be able to estimate reservoir capacity hydropower potential with and without storage. And you will be able to compute transport capacity of the channels. So this is cognitive 
uh, domain and this is the C3 taxonomy level. And again, it is mapped with the PLO4, which is the investigation. And then the third CLOA is to have commitment to carry out literature review to enhance learning. So it means uh, you will be doing long life learning. So that's why it is mapped with the PLO12. And this relates with the affected domain. So it is a three, the level is three. So this is all about the CLOs. Now come to the textbooks of this subject. <clears throat> the first textbook is the same, you know, which we you are studying in fluid one and fluid two, and you are familiar with that book already. And that is the fluid mechanics with engineering applications by Robert and Defelty, Joseph Frenzini, and John Philemon. The second book is Open Channel Flow by Venti Chow. It's a very nice book on the hydraulic engineering. And the third is Civil Engineering Hydraulics by Novak, Moffat, and Naluri. And uh, this is uh, also a very nice English book uh, on this hydraulic engineering. And the fourth book is Fluvial Process in the River Engineering by Howard. A Chang, and uh, this book we will only use uh, for one chapter, which we will be studying, and that is the sediment transport. So mainly you should be having uh, this book number one and book number three with you, and uh, most of the assignments would be from these books. So as we are doing the introduction of the subject, so you must be knowing the marks distribution. Of course, uh, finally you don't get marks, you get grades, but of course grades are given on the basis of marks. So in the theory part, let's say if they contain 100 marks, then in the uh, mid semester exam, you have to give one 30 marks theory paper and 10 marks quiz. Whereas at the end semester, you have to appear in 40 marks of the theory paper and 10 marks of the theory quiz. And then these 10 marks are for class participation and your attendance. So these total makes the 100 marks. And in part two, uh, maybe 20% marks uh, are kept for the final Viva OC examination, whereas 80% marks are uh, given on these four uh, criteria. Number one, your attendance in the lab and your lab report or design report and the Viva OC, internal Viva OC examinations and the internal quizzes. Now come to the course outline of the subject of hydraulic engineering. In total, we will... Uh, Excuse you know, me, sir. GJ. Sir, please set the privacy. Someone is removing me from the meeting. Actually... Okay, in the rest, I can fix that problem. Okay, there are some changes. Yes, okay, I can do that. So art chapter G M Nepalne total uh, in this subject. The first chapter is steady flow in open channels. The second is uh, non-uniform flow in open channels. The third is discharge measurement in open channels. 
and the fourth is unsteady flow in pipes and channels. I think you know what is a steady flow, by the way. The steady flow kya hota hai? A steady flow. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, the flow in which the velocity is the same at any point. At any point. <laughs> No, actually, in the, the flow in which conditions of the flow remains constant at a particular section of the conduit with respect to time. Okay? Time ke saaf se agar velocity change nahi ho rahi, wahan pe pressure change nahi ho raha, aur agar open channel hai, to depth of flow change nahi ho rahi, to iska kya matlab hai? That flow is steady flow. Okay, that agar wo constant rehti hai. What is non-uniform flow? If the conditions of flow does not remain same from section to section, that is called as non-uniform flow. Matab kya hai? एक सेक्शन पे वेलोसिटी कुछ और है दूसरे सेक्शन पे वेलोसिटी कुछ और है एक सेक्शन पे प्रेशर कुछ और है दूसरे सेक्शन पे प्रेशर कुछ और है अगर दोनों सेक्शन पे वेलोसिटी सेम होगी तो कौन सा फ्लो होगा यूनिफॉर्म फ्लो इफ इन केस ऑफ ओपन चैनल ओपन चैनल में इफ द डेप्थ ऑफ फ्लो एट दीस टू सेक्शंस इज सेम तो फ्लो कौन सा है The flow is uniform. And you know, in an open channel, if the depth of flows are different at the two sections, the wo flow comes out non uniform. Tigo vi basamajagi? Okay, the fifth chapter would be hydraulic similitude. And the sixth would be dams. And the seventh would be hydropower engineering, and the eighth would be sediment transport in open channels. So maybe 50% of the chapters would be conducted by me, covered by me, and the 50% by engineer Abdul Rahman. Or we will see a more part I will take. Maybe the two hours lecture will be taken by me or one hour by him. Then I will cover more course. And these are the details of each chapter. In case of steady flow in open channels, we want to discuss the specific energy, critical depth, subcritical flow, then the critical flow and the super critical flow, ye cheeze hum discuss karenge is chapter mein. In the second chapter, the non-uniform flow hai in open channels, we will uh, discuss flow over the humps and constrictions, jo constriction hoti hai and contracted sections pe, and then the water surface profiles and gradually varied flow and hydraulic jumps, etc. In the third chapter, discharge measurement, where we will discuss various devices to measure discharge, like critical depth meters, broad crested weirs, and the venturi flumes. And then in the unsteady flow, um, pipe may unsteady flow ko discuss karenge. Any any example, very common example of unsteady flow in pipelines, koi mujhe dega. Maybe you can give me example at your houses, house level key example <coughs> of the unsteady flow in pipes. Yes.
Any example? Do you have washrooms? Washrooms yes, have Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So is there water taps in the washrooms? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Water tap. Water tap basically kya hai? Valve hai. Yes, sir. And with the valve, what you can do? You can control the flow rate. Aap band kar sakte flow ko ya bada sakte hai. Na? Yes, sir. Okay, when the valve of the water tap is closed, so the pipe hai, usme velocity of flow kitni hai? Zero. Zero. And pressure is very high. Hai na? As you open the valve, what happens to the velocity of flow? Thoda sa kholenge, thodi si velocity pipe mein shuru If you will open more, the more velocity will start. And when you will open maximum, there would be maximum velocity of flow in the pipe. Okay, then what happens when you close the valve? Now the velocity of flow will keep on decreasing in the pipe. Or pressure go kya hoga? Pressure will be keep on increasing. So ye jo condition hai of closing of a valve, uh, or opening of a valve, or closing of a valve, is my flow cons out there pipe may steady and steady? Steady, sir. And it? Unsteady. Unsteady. The flow is unsteady. Uska baal hum ne discuss karna hai. Ye jo discharge through orifices may unsteady flow kaise hoga. Over wears kaise hoga. Hana? Jab head change ho jayega wear pe. So, of course, the flow will become unsteady. Then we will discuss water and hammer phenomena. And then. We will also discuss the instantaneous closure kya hota hai, slow closure kya hota hai, ye valve ka closure. And then the surges in open channels. Then we will discuss hydraulic semi-chute. Ke bhai ye jo humne ek bada dam design kiya hai, spillway design kiya hai, usko hum uh, chote scale pe model bana ke test karna cha rahe hai. To wo hum model kaise bana hai, uske dimension kaise lege, thik hai? So, we have to scale and after that, which similarities we consider? We have to consider similarities between geometric, kinematic, and dynamic similarities. So, we have to use the base of the dimensionless number. This is basically the physical models. Then we will discuss the dams, the types, the forces, and the dams. And gravity dam ka jo design hai, wo kaise karenge? Or reservoir ke baare mein, reservoir engineering, jo basic terms hai about reservoir that we will discuss, and the regulation of storage reservoirs. Then uh, we will discuss the hydropower engineering, site selection kaise karte hai, power ki calculation kaise karenge, main components kya hai hydropower scale ke. Then the sediment transport in open channels, uh, we will discuss ke ji ye, what are the properties of individual sediments? Wo kya hoti hai, theek hai na? Aur mukhtalif bed forms kya hai? Aur phir jo hai na wo how we can compute? What is bed load? What is suspended load? What is the total load? Etc. And this is the lecture delivery plan from uh, my side. And uh, you know, uh, after eight consecutive. Uh, you know, theory lectures, then there would be a mid semester exam, and then uh, there would be if the conditions prevail and if they will allow us, then we would like to visit some, you know, the dam in nearby to Lahore, like Rawal Dam, or any hydraulic structures in Lahore because uh, during you know January there is a closure period of the canals and we can go inside the canals and uh, we can uh, you know uh, see the hydraulic structures uh, like canal fall etc. Uh, this is the lecture delivery plan of engineer Abdurrahman and uh, that you can see because these are these will be these are shared with you and now the experiments laboratory work which we will be you will be doing mainly 
uh, you will be doing with these two teachers, engineer Abdurrahman and engineer Abeya. And uh, in this uh, lab work, we will perform both the lab experiments as well as designs. If you recall, in the in the fluid mechanics one and fluid mechanics two, you have carried out laboratory experiments. And in hydrology, engineering hydrology subject, you have not carried out any uh, experiment, but uh, you carry, you basically conducted design exercises. So in this subject, you will do both in the lab. So you will do these four experiments and also these uh, uh, design exercises. So when we will be here, because what we initially planned that the first half of uh, this session 2018 uh, will uh, conduct classes on physical basis here at UET. And uh, uh, the two sessions, they are now at home and they are studying online. And you know, after mid semester exam, you will go uh, home and the, the other two sessions will come. So that's why in the first half, we would like to finish the first experiments because the experiments you cannot do online that you should be present in the lab. And uh, this is the laboratory, uh, you know, the delivery plan and how the Viva OCs they will conduct ETC. And at the end, as this subject is very scientific subject, so you must have scientific calculator in the classroom with you because we will be doing calculation work in the class. And if you will be having this calculator, then you can learn the things so quickly. The second, uh, it is, uh, I think uh, this would be beneficial for you if you will bring book of Deferti with you and uh, book of Mullery with you because uh, we will be solving the miracles from the book and uh, uh, these are required. So in the next lectures, when you will come physically in the class or even after that, <laughs> when you, we will be studying online, you should have these books as you can consult the books directly during the lecture and we can start any numeric solving a numerical. And with this, uh, the first part of the introduction is over. And if you have any questions, you are welcome in the in the introduction of the course. Yes. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, now we would like to have a 10 minute rest. Okay. And uh, the time is now nine and we will again meet uh, you with inshallah nine o'clock. Uh, sorry, nine, 10 past nine. Okay, just have a rest for 10 minutes. Okay, sir. Okay, are you back? Yes, sir. <clears throat> okay, now uh, this is the second part of introduction of uh, the subject hydraulic engineering, and that is the introduction to OBE. And you know very well that OBE means outcome based education. So Today we want to discuss what is OBE and uh, why we are using this uh, uh, you know, system of education instead of traditional education. When you, uh, you know, when you did your FSC, which type of education system was there? That was the traditional education system. 
that is called as faculty centered education system and here in uet uh, which system we are following outcome based education system so main emphasis we are giving on the outcomes of the student not mainly on the on your cgpa but on the outcomes so what is meant by the outcome outcome means the result final the product the output that is known as outcome and uh, what is the by the way product of the university <coughs> of any university their product is basically their graduates so universities are also like industries you know in the industry uh, in any industry there is a certain input material we give them and that is called as raw material and then the there are certain processes in the industry and then the industry produces some product for example in case of sugar mill what is the input to the sugar mill what is the raw material which sugarcane we give to the sugar mill sugarcane sugarcane and uh, in the sugar mill there are certain processes to explain chemical mechanical processes and so many processes and after processes what is the outcome of the sugar mill sugar sugar that is the sugar bags okay so similarly universities are the industries and what is the raw material given to this university that those are the fresh students and then certain processes are being carried out over these students and what is the output the outcome in the form of graduates all right <clears throat> so what is obe you know it's a system of education which involves assessments and evaluations this may assessment hoti hai aur evaluation hoti hai uh, from various stakeholders so in the ob system assessments and evaluations are being carried out from the stakeholders what are the main stakeholders of uh, you know of you people talk faculty number one is the faculty is the stakeholder second you yourself students you are a stakeholder third your parents they are stakeholders fourth you know the technical staff in the department that is the stakeholder and the fourth uh, and the fifth is the employer who will give you employment is a major stakeholder and the alumni alumni jo isi se isi idare se padi hui hai aur ab kaam kar rahi hai that is also a stakeholder okay so these all stakeholders so the assessments are carried out from these stakeholders in the form of interviews in the form of questionnaire surveys and we get the feedback of the all stakeholders particularly the alumni and the employers that how over uh you know the graduates they are performing in the field so these assessments and evaluations were not present in the traditional education system you know as you did uh, as when we have not adopted this ob system we were not bothering about that how our graduate is performing in the field but now we have the assessment and evaluation and we we bother
And now we are again uh, joined back. So are you connected? Yes, sir. So you see, net is wrong. It was fine. It was fine. So we are going to start now. Is the slide visible to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. कर लेते हैं जी ये so hmm. now I think it should be visible. ठीक है अभी Yes sir. <laughs> All right. So when we say program, तो आपके program का क्या नाम है? Which you are studying? What is the name of your program? BSC Civil Engineering, sir. BSC Civil Engineering is your program. Or a student who is learning in any program that is called as a student who have just passed the program that is called as graduate or alumni care, ex student who is now working in the field that is called as alumni. So now we want to discuss the domains of engineering program. So engineering program ke kitne domain hai? How many are the domains? Three domains. Three domain hai na bhai? First is the cognitive domain. Second is the psychomotor domain. And third is the affective domain. What do you mean by the cognitive domain? Cognitive domain means the engineering knowledge which you will learn in this program. So that is the cognitive domain. What is the psychomotor domain? The skills which you will learn by moving your body parts. That is called as psychomotor. And the affective domain, you know, the attitude and the ethical manners ethical values which you will learn and which you will follow and which you will observe uh, you know during this program and uh, that is called as effective domain so in this program of engineering so when you entered in this program and when you leave this program there should be hell of difference or achievement in your cognitive domain in your psychomotor domain and in your affective domain, <coughs> okay? So, in Urdu, to cognitive domain, we say Talim. And this psychomotor and affective domain, both these are called as Tarbiyat. So, Talim or Tarbiyat is essentially required. And from any institute, so, we only give cognitive domain, but we Tarbiyat bhi karte so these three domains of engineering uh, can be related with the human body parts. Cognitive domain, kiss body parts can relate kar sakte? It is associated with? Mind? Yes, brain. Okay, human brain. Koi bhi cheez hum yaad karte hai, toh kahan yaad hoti hai? In our brain. Psychomotor, so how the psychomotor we can associate with which body part? With the hands. When we perform experiments in the lab, when we do survey, so basically hands use karen. So is skill hum learn karenge by moving body parts, that is called a psychomotor. And uh, the hand is the Human part. Yeah. Active domain, jo hai, usse sa body part associated? Hai? Sir, passively mind. Hai. We say that this is heart. We get a heart. Hai. So, Samara response, Samara manners. So, that is something.
उनके दिलों में मस है सो इट्स ऑफ द एंजल रैंक सो इफ यू विल सी इन एनी एंजल प्रोग्राम सो यू विल फाइंड अ वेरी लार्ज and both compared to main which is the psychomotor and the affective domain usually 70% is the contribution from cognitive domain and 30% from the uh, psychomotor and the affective domain whereas in case of technology programs may uh, the cognitive domain is relatively smaller small <coughs> maybe 30% is this and 70% are the psychomotor psychomotor domain bahut zyada hota hai so they they have given more trainings uh, and uh, so their skill domain or the uh, training domain is much larger in, in for the technologists okay and that is the main difference between engineering pro program and the technology program in engineering programs uh, we are supposed that the engineer should solve complex engineering problems whereas a technology program uh, it's graduate should solve an engineering problem because uh, he doesn't know the cognitive domain in depth as compared to a, an engineering program here in this on this slide further the difference between engineering and engineering technology programs is explained if you will see this diagram <laughs> so from here to here this is the domain of engineering engineering domain starts from research innovation innovative thinking complex analysis then the complex design so this whole is innovative thinking and creation and then development product design testing and evaluation manufacturing production operation service and maintenance and finally the distribution and sales marketing also comes in engineering so this whole is the engineering domain whereas engineering technology domain starts from development and then product design test and evaluation manufacturing production operation service and maintenance and distribution and sales it means engineering technology is a subset of engineering okay because there this part is weak and what is that that is the research innovative you know uh, thinking complex analysis and complex design so that's why uh, the technology programs they have lesser share of the cognitive domain but in engineering programs so there is more share of the cognitive domain is it clear yes sir sir i have a question yes sure so market ke andar uh, jo engineers hai na ab aap hi ne bataya ki cognitive domain mein hamara 70% hota hai aur training mein hamare paas technical mein 30% hota hai yes jo diploma ya technical wale hote hain unke paas 70% एक्सपेरिमेंटल uh, होता है और 30 परसेंट के पास कॉग्नेटिव होता है यस मार्केट में तो वही बिकेगा जो दिखता है तो हम इस चीज को कैसे जस्टिफाई करेंगे कि इंजीनियरिंग करना बेहतर है या हमारे पास नो नो हमारे पास बेहतर स्किल है बट द थिंग इज इंजीनियर्स दे हैव टू कवर ईच एंड एवरीथिंग दे हैव टू कवर दिस एज वेल एज दैट सो इंजीनियर इन इंजीनियरिंग टेक्नोलॉजी दे हैव देयर दिस डोमेन ठीक है ना so it does not mean that the technologist which they can do the engineers they cannot do so this is wrong they can also do lekin engineering technology mein more emphasis is given to the practical uh, things and to the industry directly to the psychomotor part more so they are more uh, you know uh, Uh, they can they can uh, their product is more towards the uh, manufacturing etc but this does not mean that the engineer they can he cannot do manufacturing he can also do all right 
But on the other hand, if you will see the engineering technologists that they cannot go towards the complex analysis and complex design and innovative designs etc so that is the main difference so that's why more emphasis is given for engineering technologists towards the industry and market and so on you can say that initially maybe they they have more hands on experience uh, because of the more trainings as compared to engineers but engineers they can compete equally Would you get it? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> now, what are the benefits of outcome-based education system? First benefit is that in this education system, more directed and rational curriculum, because this curriculum comes from where? Directed means who, who is directing us to, to you know, improve the curriculum? Co-director, of course, the employer. Employer, who is NASPA, ACE, WABDA, this, huh? the big department, CNW, NHA, and they are they are saying that okay, oh no, no, now we need these softwares, now we need this thing, now we need your students are weak and that. So they, they direct us and accordingly we improve our curriculum. So that is the benefit of the ODP. Secondly, graduates should be more relevant to the industry. Whatever is required in the industry, we produce like that. The third is enhancing public relations. Of course, the, once the, uh, we have more relationships with the industry, the faculty would be having good relationships with the industry people. Number four, improve avenues for internships and jobs. Once we have more uh, relationships with the industry people, we can send our students easily to the internships and we can refer uh, towards jobs. And you know, after 2018, PEC says that no B, then no accreditation from PAC. And in OB system, there is CQI, so the continuous quality improvement, okay? Continuous quality improvement. There is no end of the improvement. You just assess, do assessments, then do evaluations, then compare it with the KPIs. And uh, if uh, we need uh, improvements, please do improvement every year and keep on doing that. And number seven, degree will be well recognized in Washington Accord countries. And uh, Pakistan has become 19th full signatory of the Washington Accord in June 2017. Now we want to see what are the uh, Washington Accord countries where our degree is well recognized. So the, those are these countries starting from Australia to Costa Rica. And uh, they got this Washington Accord in 2020, whereas Pakistan got in 2017. And these countries like Australia, Canada, they got in 1989 uh, through their engineers, Australia, which is a governing body, regulatory body, like in Pakistan. What is the regulatory body of engineering? That is the Pakistan Engineering Council. So these are the countries which are struggling for getting the Washington Accord signatureship. And uh, like Bangladesh, Chile, Mexico, Philippines, Thailand, Indonesia, ATC. So they are in the process uh, through their institutions and uh, they may get, um, uh, you know, the OB system of education. Now they are trying. Now, very briefly, we want to discuss UET vision and mission and the mission of the program of the civil engineering, BSc civil engineering. And before starting this UET vision and mission, uh, may I know the difference between the both? You know, what is the difference between the vision of any institute 
and the mission of an institute. Anyone can help me? Vision is uh, where they want to go and mission is the practical approach how they can get to that point. Mm. Okay, you are uh, not 100% true, but uh, anyway, you have mentioned something. So mission is the present state of any institute. Whatever they are performing activities, that is the mission statement of any institution. Whereas the vision, vision means that is their wish list, there they want to go in future. So that they want to achieve in future, maybe after certain years, maybe after 10 years or 15 years, so they want to achieve that goal. So that goal is their vision, okay? <clears throat> For example, the vision, what is the UET vision? To generate knowledge for global competitive advantage and become a leading world-class research university. What do you think? Is UET is a world-class leading research university? What do you think? Its graduate is all over the world, so it surely will be. No, no, it is not a research university. UET is not a world class research university. Yes, UET wants to become a world class research university. That's why this is the mission, vision statement. All right? Now, what is the mission statement? What the UET is doing to play a leading role as a university of engineering and technology in teaching? Yes, UET is doing teaching. Research, yes, they are doing research. Innovation, yes, they are doing. Commercialization, they are doing. That is internationally relevant and has a direct bearing on national, and here is comma, industrial, technological, and socio-economic development. So this all is UET doing. So that's why it is the mission of the UET. Now, what is the mission of program BSc Civil Engineering program? To impart high quality civil engineering education through modern teaching and research for the national and international socio-economic development. So this is the mission statement of the program. And now we want to discuss the objectives and outcomes which are available in the outcome-based education system or OBE system. <clears throat> and you know, in the OBE system, we have PEOs, Program Educational Objectives. Uh, do you know how many are the program educational objectives of Civil Engineering Program, BSc Civil Engineering Program, kitne hai bhai? Total number. I think you might have seen posters in the corridors of Civil Engineering Department. And even you can check well, on, the on the website. Kitne hai jay? 12? No, not 12. Those are four. These are the four program educational objectives. By the way, what is the meaning? What is meant by program educational objectives of the civil engineering program? <coughs> Your program of uh, educational objectives is what is it? Which statement is it? Don't know, sir. Actually, program education objectives are those qualities or abilities which will be produced in our graduates after five years of the graduation. 
यहाँ से ग्रेजुएशन करने के बाद पांच साल वो फील्ड में काम करता रहा है एंड आफ्टर फाइव इयर्स व्हाट वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग दैट व्हाट ही कैन डू दोज आर दी प्रोग्राम एजुकेशनल ऑब्जेक्टिव्स इज इट क्लियर यस सर ओके नाउ व्हाट आर दी पीएलओस प्रोग्राम लर्निंग आउटकम्स कितने प्रोग्राम लर्निंग आउटकम्स ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग प्रोग्राम वेल Bara, yes, twelve. And what is meant by the program learning outcomes? So these are the abilities, are uh, the traits, are uh, the attributes which it can get by the time of graduation. जैसे ही वो graduate होता है, वो सारे उसमें आ जाएं. ठीक है, वो सारी qualities उसमें आ जाएं. वो कितनी है? Bara. ठीक. And we assess on semester basis. Har semester mein aapki assessment hoti hai. PLOs hote hain. And what are the CLOs? Course learning outcomes. So, what are course learning outcomes? These are the abilities uh, which are produced after passing a course. Okay. So, ye outcomes hain or objectives hain. Now, we would like to see the प्रोग्राम एजुकेशनल ऑब्जेक्टिव्स और ये हम एक्सपेक्ट कर रहे हैं आफ्टर हाउ मेनी इयर्स ऑफ ग्रेजुएशन ऑफ फाइव इयर्स फाइव इयर्स तो फाइव ईयर के बाद हम देखना चाहते हैं अपने ग्रेजुएट्स को कहा एक्चुअली दिस इज विश लिस्ट ऑफ द यू नो द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ ए इंजीनियरिंग प्रोग्राम वो क्या है नंबर वन ग्रेजुएट्स के जरा पांच साल बाद ग्रेजुएट डेमोस्ट्रेट देर प्रोफिशंसी ऑफ अप्लाइंग द नॉलेज and skills kis liye to solve complex civil engineering problem wo khud complex engineering problem ko solve kar sakenge number 2 graduates communicate effectively and contribute in project team project team mein bada acha part play karenge number 3 graduates uphold principle of ethics you know they will be working ethical ethically and societal obligations जो भी सोसाइटी की जरूरियात है उसको मद्देनजर रखते हुए एंड विद इंटेग्रिटी इंटेग्रिटी क्या है दैट इज राइट जी जो सही बात है उसको सही कहना जो गलत है उसको गलत कहना और डोंट कंप्रोमाइज ऑन द क्वालिटी डोंट टेक ब्राइव्स सो दैट शोज योर इंटेग्रिटी थ्रू आउट देयर प्रोफेशनल प्रैक्टिस और चौथी graduates engage themselves in continuous professional learning process what is continuous professional learning process long life learning keep on learning keep on learning okay for the sustainability so these are our five program educational objectives which we expect in you people after 5 years of the graduation now these are the plo Those and PUs mapping. I am skipping because the time is too short. And these are over 12 PLOs, program learning outcome. Or ye, aapke aap, you all uh, must pass these all 12 PLOs at the by the time of graduation. जब आप graduation करेंगे तो ये सारे 12 के 12 आपके pass होने चाहिए. Can you see your uh, PLO result from the LMS? Yes, sir. है ना जैसे आप आगे इस semester में जा रहे हैं, so you can also see your PLO result. And you know at the end you can also get the PLO transcript from LMS. LMS आपको वो भी दे देगा कि आपके 12 के 12 PLO में आया वो pass है और इनकी percentages क्या क्या है. And you know what is the KPI in PLOs? हमने कितनी रखी हुई है और आप पास है ठीक है और जब ये आपके पीएलओ 12 के 12 पास होना जरूरी है ये नीचे लिखा हुआ है ईच स्टूडेंट हैज टू क्वालिफाई ऑल 12 पीएलओ ओके ठीक है यस सो व्हाट आर दोस पीएलओ इंजीनियरिंग नॉलेज है वो आप इंजीनियरिंग नॉलेज हासिल कर रहे हैं नॉट ओनली फ्रॉम वन सब्जेक्ट फ्रॉम मेनी सब्जेक्ट्स प्रॉब्लम एनालिसिस एनालिसिस यू आर डूइंग इन मेनी सब्जेक्ट्स ठीक है ना 
then then design development of solutions investigation modern tool usage engineers and society environment and sustainability ethics very important plo8 ethics individual and team work communication what do you mean by communication hmm communication means uh, you can communicate technical things technical matter to your seniors and to your juniors both uh, for example uh, sometimes you have to give a presentation to the prime minister to the maybe uh, chief minister or to the deputy commissioner or to your senior you know gm general manager and sometimes you have to explain the things to the your juniors so so you should be able to communicate technically uh, very well then the project management and lifelong learning lifelong learning means the habit of keep on learning and this is the clo plo mapping for hydraulic engineering as we discussed there are five plos and uh, these are the bloom's taxonomy levels and we already discussed that these these four clos are mapped with plo2 whereas this plo3 uh, clo3 is mapped with plo3 which is the design and development of solutions uh, this is the my out of class academic counseling hours so you can contact me uh, on these hours on tuesday and on thursday but anyway you are welcome at any time you can contact me okay and uh, this i am skipping you can read yourself the what differences a student feel with ob and uh, the cqi i am leaving because the time uh, has left only 3 minutes so i want to stop here so thank you very much for your attention and if you have any question quickly you can ask me like to leave so thank you very much ji good luck assalam alaikum